Hey everybody, welcome to Bodhi Medical Qigong. Today we're talking Qigong energy healing. Now if you haven't already, do me a favor and hit that subscribe button. Now on this channel we talk a lot about Qigong and typically when we look at Qigong we're talking about Qigong exercises and Qigong sets. And these are, as always, calisthenic movements designed to stimulate the acupuncture meridian and the associated and this all actually predates uh, codified traditional Chinese medicine. Um, and the treatments that go along with medical Qigong are energetic treatments. Now, I wanted to do a little explanation because I uh, kind of demystify the energetic treatments for a lot of people. Because people hear about Reiki and reflexology and different things, acupressure techniques, and you're kind of going, what is going on with that? Um, so I find it helpful to approach Eastern uh, modalities with a little bit of Western science, especially for the audience. So we need to understand first that all matter at the smallest level is vibrating waves of energy. Once again, even that's a hard, a hard thing for everybody. So if you think about your body, the matter of your body made up of tissue, those tissues are made up of cells. But when we go below that, all cells are made up of elements, like the periodic table of elements from grade nine science. All those elements are made of molecules. Molecules are made of atoms. All those atoms are made of protons and electrons and neutrons. And all those are made from quarks. And all those are made from vibrating waves of energy. So no matter what we look at, whether we look at the air, whether we look at the table, whether we look at my lovely wife, Candy, who's helping me out today, um, or we look at ourselves, at the smallest level, there is no separation. There's just vibrating waves of energy. And that's where a practitioner can have an effect on the patient, even just talking to the patient. We have an effect because there is a seamless connection of energy. Now, for a Qigong practitioner like myself, we're trained hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of hours uh, to be able to have a, a deeper connection to our own Qi, the Qi around us, and the Qi of someone else. And we start this, and once again, I did this in a video called What is Qi? Uh, a video uh, on exercise, how to actually connect to your own Qi. Really simple, you can just open up your fingers, press the center of your palms together, rub it for a few seconds, it starts to get hot, and then if you pull it apart about an inch, you'll start to feel, yeah, heat, but you'll also feel that pressure, like two ends of, the set of a magnet being pressed together. You can feel that repulsion and pressure, and this is your Wei Qi field, this is your prana, this is your electromagnetic energy. And over time, with lots of training and lots of practice, you can then slowly move it out to the rest. You can start to feel up that arm, feeling the energy as it moves. As you get better at that, you can flip it over, feel the outside, and then slowly but surely you can learn to feel the energy and sense the energy over the entire body. This becomes an actually amazing thing for sensing differences in the electromagnetic field. And once again, so if we look at health or illness, these are just energy vibrating at its normal parameters, we call that health, or energy vibrating in a disharmonious energetic way, not vibrating properly at the right speed, they're static in the radio signal, and we would call this illness, sickness, cancer, bad breath, whatever you want to call it, um, it would just be energy not vibrating in the right frequency. So the job of an energetic practitioner is to sense first, diagnose uh, the imbalances, and then uh, find some way to regulate them. And basically all energetic treatments kind of go through four different stages. And so I'm gonna break it down for you today. We're actually not gonna do a treatment, but I'm gonna break down for you so you can understand, so it's not so mystical and foreign, uh, but you can understand what the practitioner is actually doing when you're lying there on the bed. So all treatments are gonna begin with step one, which is basically diagnosis. And this is gonna be the patient talking to the practitioner and explaining what's going on, uh, basically a health history. Similar to what I do as an acupuncturist, I'm gonna ask a bazillion questions, 120 different questions to understand what's going on in the body. The history of the illness. Uh, we wanna know the etiology, what happened at first. So I stubbed my toe, I have digestive upset, I have migraines, whatever the case may be. Uh, I wanna know when it started and how it started. And then I wanna understand pathogenesis. I wanna understand the path that it moved through the body. Well, I started with a headache, and then over time I started to get some digestive upset, and then I was starting to get some pain in my feet. I was getting some swelling. How it moved through the body. And disease actually has a course. It's really interesting to understand. So that would be the first part, the theoretical diagnosis, where the patient talks to me, and I'm gonna ask a whole bunch of questions, so I can say, hmm, this is sounding like a liver issue, this is sounding like a kidney issue, or a spleen issue, uh, or a blood issue, or a fluid issue. 
The next part is the energetic part. And this is where all the training comes in because now it's my position as the practitioner to actually learn to connect and feel the differences. So what it may just simply look like is once again, the practitioner is gonna take a good stand so energy flows through the body. And this is a simple posterior pelvic tilt, lifting from the crown of the head. This aligns my microcosmic orbit as energy moves through my body so I can be as strong as possible. I need to quiet my mind because if you can believe it, a treatment for the practitioner actually has to be a meditation. Now there's a, a, a practice that people do called the laying of hands where people come into hospitals and they just put the hands on and they say, I'm just not going to do anything and I'm just going to let what happened happen. And this actually can be very dangerous because if as a practitioner I'm old, sick, unhealthy, weak, and then my patient is very young and vibrant, I can actually literally suck the life right out of them. I can suck the energy out of them because an energetic, uh, a stronger energy always moves to a weaker energy. Now that's not typically the case with a patient because usually, hopefully, the practitioner is healthy and strong and the patient is coming because they're weak. But once again, I want to make sure that I am only a conduit for energy to move. We're going to get into that, but first it's just about sensing. So I'm going to find a nice strong position. I'm going to place one hand on my tummy so I can connect to my lower dantian. This is two inches below the belly button, two inches deep inside. And this is the deepest part of my energy, where the energy that travels in and around my body now remember we talked about electromagnetic field, what's called a toroidal field. This is like uh, around a bar magnet. So about three feet all around me, arms like goes all around me, comes in through the top of my head, down through the bottom of my body and circles around me 360 degrees. That's my bubble of energy. And so I want to now sort of sense and detect changes in her bubble of energy. So I'm going to connect one hand. Now some practitioners do this right or left and there's different theories whether it Everyone should be right or everyone should be left. It's really some people are more sensitive with, with either hand. For, the, for today, what we're going to do is knees bent, pelvis tuck, lifting from the crown of the head, left hand on the lower dantian, and I'm going to use my right hand to sense. So right hand, they typically talk about as projecting chi, whereas left hand of sensing chi, of, of internalizing chi. Uh, once again, I'm just more sensitive on my right side. So I'm basically going to hold my hand about an inch or two or three, just you know, a few inches above Andy's tummy. Um, and what I'm going to slowly do is I'm going to connect and feel that same pressure that I felt in my head. Now I've been doing this a long, long time, so for me it's very easy to very quickly feel the Wei Chi feeling. Um, I feel it literally almost instantly. But that took me a lot of years of work. I can remember being with my master and like rubbing my hands and like I feel like an idiot. I don't feel anything. And she was like, just keep doing it. And he was like, just keep doing it. And then over time, suddenly, wow, I could feel it. But yeah, after many, many years now, I could just sort of put my hand on anything and I could feel it right away. So as a practitioner, what I'm going to look for is differences. And I'm going to slowly run my hand over the entire body. And I'm going to look for changes in the field. Now, the changes may be, it's quite neat because when you feel that pressure against your hand, what you may feel, sometimes it'll push more. Like you'll feel like a lump of energy. It's really quite neat, like a mound and it will be pushing harder against your hand. Or sometimes where you'll get to a place, maybe there was an old injury and there's weakness in there, you'll feel this depression, like this little valley. And it's really quite palpable. You can really feel the difference and it's quite neat. And it becomes a, an interesting party trick that everyone always wants me to do, where I'm like, put someone on a table and just have, oh yeah, you have an injury here. Oh yeah, you have an injury here. And it's every 100% accurate every single time. And you can go, the injury's here, not here. But that's one part of it. Now the other part might be heat or cold. So there may be places where, from a Western perspective, we could call inflammation. More blood in an area is going to exert more heat and you'll be able to very easily heal, feel that. Sometimes less blood in an area that's not being nourished properly, that's not moving fluids properly, will be cool. A lot of time people, especially women on their period, there'll be areas where their kidney area feels extremely cold because blood has been moving to a certain area or they've been losing blood, losing lots of iron, so they're a bit anemic at that point. So, the practitioner's job is to A, first diagnose, and let's see, all the stuff they talked about during the intake, does it coincide? And did they miss something? Oh, there's a little bit of stagnation here, there's a little bit of this. And over time, the practitioner gets really good at feeling differences. Both, does the chi feel strong or weak? Does it feel cold or hot? Does it feel deep inside? Does it feel on the surface? And these are the eight different aspects that we look for in Chinese, traditional Chinese medicine. But what you also start to feel is where there are disharmonious to you, where she's not moving quite right at all. And you start to feel that, you feel this kind of wobbly, 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 almost like pinpricks on your hand. 
and the more disharmonious that is, you can feel it. It's amazing. You can feel, like for example, my my stepmom died of cancer, and before she died, when I was feeling the cancer, it's it's an amazing thing for me as a practitioner. It was amazing for me to feel what that felt like that pressure and how it felt. Um, it was quite an impacting thing to feel. So um, all disease does feel different, but it all does break down to those eight different qualities. So once we've sensed over the whole body, and this we'll, we'll spend a few minutes doing this, and once again, it's explorative in the sense that, so I may go and I feel nothing, and then I'm like, oh, I get to this area here, and then, okay, where, what do I feel? Now, for the practitioner, I'm also going, okay, in this area, what's running here? There's the stomach meridian, there's the gallbladder meridian, there's the spleen meridian. We have several meridians running in this area. Where is it most closely? And then I may want to track that meridian to see, okay, well, you know what? It's actually the spleen meridian that has some kind of weakness or excess uh, in it, uh, some pathology in it. So I'm always looking to switch back and forth from east to west because I can go, okay, well, I'm near the liver. Oh, but it's actually the gallbladder channel. So I want to really understand what's going on before I actually start changing anything or seeking to affect change. So that's a diagnosis. That's step one. That's a huge part of it. So once I understand what's going on with this candy, the next thing is to, we want to purge any excess. And disease typically is a combination of some excess and some deficiency. Sometimes it's deficiency caused by excess and sometimes it's excess caused by deficiency. Uh, it's kind of a crazy thing, but that's a longer, longer explanation. But for now, what we want to do is we want to get rid of any excesses first because then the next stage is going to be to tonify. So when it comes to excesses, once I've determined what's going on, then I'm going to actually start to once again sense the whole field. And if we know that there's excesses in the field, there are several techniques and simple general techniques. One is a raking technique. We're using a tiger claw. And this actually is where you can see the, the connection between Kung Fu and the, and the medicine that came from the same temple. Um, so a, a raking technique, a clawing technique, which once again, all it's going to look like from the camera side, from the patient side, is literally me just dragging my hands down her body. And what you'll notice is that, so as I'm healing, I'm feeling a buildup in my hands as I'm dragging down. And I'm just throwing off a little bit of energy because the last thing I want to do is be actually taking any of this excess into me. Because at this point, I'm looking to pull out, pull out, pull out. So that intention, he thou chi thou, the mind goes, the chi follows. Last thing I want to do is take on any of this thing. Every single practitioner that I've known and all the people I trained with when I was doing metaphysical training, in the beginning stages, everyone trying to do this stuff, you know, like they had a this person on the table had a sore shoulder. And so they were like, okay, I'm gonna pull all this stuff out of the shoulder. And the next day they came in, they're like, man, my shoulders hurt. Sounds crazy, but let me tell you, it happens to everybody. It happens to everybody because you take on that stagnation a little bit if you're not mindful of your intention. Once again, he thou chi thou, the mind goes, the chi follows. So at this point, I need to be understand that I'm connecting to this energy and gathering it, and I'm gonna make sure that I have the intention that I'm gonna release that energy, that I'm not gonna take it into myself. It's no different than spending time with a person who's angry or upset or sad, and then you go home and you feel exhausted, and you feel kind of crappy for the next day or so. And it's like they, they infected you with their disharmony. They literally have because you let it in. You actually allowed that energy into your energetic bubble and it created disharmony within your own energetic sphere, your own toroidal field. So this would be one method to dredge or drag out some of the excesses and then we check again. So how does the field feel now? Does it feel more, we're always looking for homogeneity, we're always looking for it to be even, right? We don't want to feel deficiencies or excess, we want to feel that everything feels okay. And once again, it shouldn't feel like it's exploding off the table, but it should feel just a few inches that it all feels kind of the same. So anywhere we feel, oh, we feel a little bit more of an excess there, we're going to clear that out. And once again, from the onlooker, it doesn't look like I'm doing much. But once again, it's a t intention. Intention is everything with all medicine. Whether it's a pharmaceutical, whether it's a needle, whether it's energetically, it's all the same thing. We just have that trouble because oh, I can't see him doing anything, so he must not be doing anything. We have to have a little bit more insight than that. We have to understand that there is no separation between me, the air, and the canvas. It's all energy. So once we make that leap, everything's possible. So 
I can use a few different techniques. And so that was just a simple raking technique. I could use a technique where I run energy through meridian. For example, I could run her stomach channel down to her second and third toe, and I could lead energy up and down it mentally. All I'm doing is making a connection with my hands. It just gives me something to visualize and connect to. And then I'm literally visualizing energy running through the channel. Now I gotta know the channels really well, and I need to be able to visualize where it goes. So once again, attention becomes a huge part of it. And this is why a couple months or a couple of years of training this is just not enough. It takes years to be a, a, an effective and efficient practitioner of this stuff. It's not a weekend seminar. It takes time, just like all medicine takes time. But once again, another technique, I could just lead energy looking to break any stagnations that may be here, any deficiencies or excesses that may be here. I may be just leading to lead that energy down, out, 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 drain in any of that excess. So, and once again, there's many techniques for this. I'm just gonna show you a few. So the next thing is once we've diagnosed and then we've drained any excess is to then tonify. We wanna make sure we strengthen the body because there's definitely gonna be deficiencies that led to that relative excess. So a simple way for tonification is to once again connect to the bottom of the foot. This is kidney one, the bubbling well, the young trod point. Uh, and this is where we actually connect to the earth. And this is why uh, forest bathing or walking in your bare feet outside is so healing on us. Once again, it's that connection of a stronger electromagnetic field the earth has on us. Just like the stronger electromagnetic field of the sun has on the earth. So I'm going to very simply connect to her kidney one point, and these give me two points of reference that I can now lead energy through me. And this is a huge part for practitioners to be mindful of because once again, I can say, okay, Candy's not feeling well today. She has a migraine today, and I want to help Candy. This is damaging for Bodhi. <laughs> what Bodhi has to be saying is that I have to be a conduit. Top of my head is... Do 20 is where energy comes down through my Taiji pole, center of my body down to my lower Dantian and then moves out through my extremities to my hands. So I have to be mindful of the fact is when I breathe in, I lead energy down through the top of my head down to my lower tummy. As I breathe out, I lead up my back, down my shoulders, out my hands to the center of my palms and into her. So it's not my chi, it's not my energy that I'm using. I'm just being open and allowing the river to flow through me that way I'm not drained at the end of the day after I've tr treated three to 12 patients, um, but I can help everyone without actually damaging myself. Because you can't heal anyone if you yourself are not healthy. So once again, I'm gonna find a nice strong position, knees bent, pelvis tuck, head, um, lifting from the crown of the head, tongue touching the roof of the mouth, just connects my microcosmic orbit. I'm gonna connect the bottom of the feet and then my visualization for this is quite lovely, and I always love this part of the treatment. I'm gonna think of basically pushing some water. So if you were to push water, you'd see the ripple of the wave move up, and then the ripple of the wave move down. And what I'm gonna to look to do is I'm gonna look, as I connect to the bottom of the feet, I'm gonna just, as I breathe out, I'm gonna just create a little bit of pressure so that on each exhalation, I move energy into her body. So I breathe in, breathe down, breathe out, lead out. Okay? So once again, I'm just standing here, looks like I'm just pushing her feet a little bit, not really doing much. But from an energetic perspective and from a meditation perspective, there is a lot going on here. Literally, I'm breathing in, energy leads down, breathing out, energy leads out into her. Breathing in, breathing out. Now I can spend one minute, five minutes, 10 minutes here, slowly feeling, 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 leading energy into her. And this is a really important part for the practitioner to be mindful that I am just the conduit. I'm not trying to fill her energetic field with my energy. I need to just be the conduit to just help her heal. And once again, the last thing I wanna do is just be sitting here doing nothing because then I'm gonna drain energy out of her. <laughs> so yeah, really, really important that I'm, my intention is to lead energy, visualizing energy, seeing energy move up as we go. And we're just gonna do a few breaths here so we can see. So, then.
skin. And now, once again, if you could see what was going on with inside of me, once again, the visualization becomes very strong. I'm seeing white, a beautiful white light, like a like a fluorescent light coming down the center of my body and then zooming out the back of my body all the way down through the center of my body. And then I'm seeing it fill up all the way to the tip of her head. So once again, a lot going on, but from the outside looking on, if you know if there was a, a relative sitting there like, well, this dude is just holding her feet. Anyways, a lot going on that's quite subtle. So now that we've tonified, we're gonna check again. So we're using right or left, we're gonna check and see how that feed, field feels. Now, listen. Even though I'm just demonstrating here, I'm already actually feeling differences in the field. You know, because it doesn't take much. My field is very strong. My field is very healthy. So it has an effect. And any of my patients will tell you that. They come into my office and they already feel better. They immediately feel better just when they walk in. Because my chi is relaxed, homogeneous, moving smoothly. And so that makes everyone feel a little bit better. So checking in once again. Feels a little bit, oh, feels a little bit. Kenny had a headache. Still a little bit in the head there. So we would want to do a little bit more to dredge some of that out, and we would dredge down the gallbladder channel, take that headache out of my body. So then the last part of a treatment would be regulation. And we always want to regulate yin and yang. And so yin side, right side, we always know that women are always right. The yin side, haha, that's so easy. My, my teacher in TCM, Mary Wu, uh, she was always the one who taught me, women are always right. It's always the easiest way to know which is yin from yang. So we always want to regulate yin, deep inside, the right side, from yang, surface and left side. Uh, so this can be very simple. We can simply be almost like we're just sweeping around. Once again, I'm connecting to the chi and I'm just bringing yin into yang, and yang into yin. I can bring yang top down into yin. I can bring yin into yang. So once again, just looks like I'm waving my hands over. It doesn't look like anything special. But here, my alignment of my body in a nice wide, what's called a horse stance, so that I can shift my weight and still keep my structure strong, my energy flowing well. I don't feel pain and stagnation in my lower back. And this is where my, my Sifu would say, everything is Kung Fu. Even a treatment is still doing Kung Fu. Hard work over time to accomplish skill. So that would be the regulation part, making sure that everything's balanced. Because maybe they're still a little bit too strong here, a little bit too weak here, so we want to make sure everything balances out. So we diagnose, we purge any excess, we tonify any deficiency, and then we regulate. And this would be anywhere from about 20 to 40 minutes uh, that the patient would be lying on the table, uh, depending on what was going on. If it was something simple, it might be uh, less. Um, this could be just a general treatment that someone would come in for once a month, once every few months, just to you know be preventive, or if they had some kind of illness that we were helping. Um, once again, no treatment works in isolation. People will come into my office all the time, and they come in for digestive things, and then they say, "Well, does the two liter of diet coke that I drink every day help with my hydration?" And I'm like, "It would be better to eat the bottle." But the fact is that it all, there's parts of it. It's lifestyle because disease is a product of behavior. So when it comes to healing the body, we have to think, yeah, the practitioner is one piece of the puzzle. The treatment is one piece of the puzzle, but behavior is huge. Anyways, guys, I just wanted to run through this today to demystify some of the energetics that might make you feel a little bit strange about any kind of energetic treatment um, and to open your eyes to a different way to heal the body. Give it a try. Thanks so much for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. As always, do me a favor. Share this video with your friends, your family. Help me to help other people. And of course, don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching.